The topic of this episode is translating necessary and sufficient conditions. So let's start with some definitions. So in logic we say that n is necessary for x, where n is a condition and x is something happening or something existing. When it is the case that x can't exist or can't happen without the presence of n. Or n is a requirement for x to happen. For example, um, oxygen is necessary for a typical gasoline motor to run. Can you think of another example of a necessary condition? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, well, you just said oxygen just is said a, necessary for a for fire a to burn. For a match to light. Okay. Yeah. You, you, need, you need oxygen. Notice the word need starts with an N. Necessary starts with an N. Necessary condition is something that's needed for something else to take place. Oh. You need oxygen in order for the match to light. Okay, good. Oxygen is necessary for a match to light. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. <laughs> and then we'll say... The that, rain's getting to me. And then we'll say S is sufficient. That was good. Yeah, it works. For x and when we say that s is sufficient for x where x is something happening or something existing and s is some condition what we mean is s is all you need for x to be or for x to occur x is once x once s obtains or exists x must be so for example uh, jumping in puget sound behind us jumping in puget sound is sufficient for getting wet if you jumped in completely. It would be enough to get wet. It's enough to get wet. Uh, jumping in Green Lake is sufficient for getting wet. Okay. How about, I'll ask you a question. If I was to take a rock and throw it through a window to break the window, would throwing a rock through the window be a sufficient or necessary condition to break the window? It's a sufficient condition, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be a necessary right. condition, would it? No, I and why throw not? Because you could throw me through a window. That would be enough. Uh, the rock would be enough. There's all kinds of things we might throw through windows, so it's not needed to throw a rock to break the window, but that would be enough to do the job. Okay, so throwing a rock through a window might be sufficient to break the window, but it's not necessary to right. break the window. Right. And to use my example, would uh, I'll quiz you. Okay. Would uh, jumping in Puget Sound, completely jumping mm -hmm. in, would that be suf would that be necessary for getting wet? or sufficient, or it'd, both? It'd be sufficient, but not necessary. I could also jump into Green Lake or the Pacific Ocean. So it'd be, it'd be enough, it'd be sufficient to get wet. Uh, but I wouldn't need to jump into the Puget Sound to get wet. I could get wet other ways. Other ways. So jumping in B Green Lake or Puget Sound is sufficient to get wet. But since there's other ways to get wet besides that, it's not necessary. Yeah. Okay, so now we have our definitions. Okay. Now it's typical, it's traditional in logic to symbolize necessary and sufficient conditions to translate them into symbols using if-then constructions. So we're going to be using horseshoes and if-thens. Let's start with uh, this. Let O stand for oxygen is present. And let um, R stand for the engine is running, and assuming it's a typical gasoline engine, like a lawnmower engine, the engine is running. I'm abbreviating a little bit. So how would we symbolize oxygen is necessary for the engine to be running, letting the sim those letters stand for those sentences? So oxygen is necessary for R. Okay, if we're going to use a horseshoe for either necessary or sufficient condition, so I know I'm going to have that. And here's a fun little uh, memory device that I think really helps a lot. Think of the word sun. Like here comes the sun like on here the comes Beatles the sun. song. Exactly. Except take the U and put it on its side. So you actually have a condition there. You'll notice S is the first letter for sufficient. N is the first letter for necessary. So the necessary condition is going to be the consequent of any conditional. And the sufficient condition is going to be the antecedent of any conditional. Can I translate for you? Go ahead. What Mark just said was that what this little device helps us remember is that when you're symbolizing a necessary condition, it'll go in the consequent of a conditional. When you're symbolizing a sufficient condition, the sufficient condition will go in the antecedent of a hmm. conditional. That's what he okay. just said. So Paul asked me to translate O is a necessary condition for R. So O is the necessary condition. So O goes in the N spot, if you will. I know, I've got a horseshoe, and if O is a necessary condition, it goes in this spot. R's got to go somewhere. There's only one place left. So that's going to be the correct translation if O is a necessary condition for R. 
if we have something like A is a sufficient condition for B. For instance, A would be jumping in the lake, B would be getting wet. Or, or yeah, or anything like that. Yeah. Here we're having A is a sufficient condition. Again, if I think sun, sufficient starts with S, A is going to go as the antecedent. It's in the sufficient spot. The B's got to go somewhere. There's only one place left, so we put it there. And that would be the translation of A as a sufficient condition for B. If we had A as a necessary condition for B, it would be the opposite, because then A would be in the end spot. So it's and, not bad. And so let me, and let me add right. something then to this. Let's take this off. There's a little train action going on in the background there. So, so we're, we're saying that oxygen is necessary for the engine to run. And so Mark says we symbolize it this way. If oxygen is necessary for the engine to run, then we put the oxygen in the consequent and the engine running is the antecedent. And this says if the engine's running, then oxygen is present. Now let's, that's the correct way to symbolize oxygen is necessary for an engine to run. Let's take a look and see what it sounds like if we had done it the reverse. Suppose someone symbolizes oxygen is necessary for an engine to run, and they symbolize it that way. What does this say? Well, one way of thinking about it is if, if there's oxygen, then the engine would be running. Mm -hmm. But that clearly isn't always the case. Right. right now, there's oxygen in the air. My engine isn't running. So it's right. not saying the same thing. Right. Uh, you could have oxygen, but your lawnmower engine's not running. It's broken. Mm -hmm. Or it doesn't have a spark plug. It needs electricity, too. So this is correct. This is not correct. And su suppose I say jumping in Green Lake is sufficient for getting wet. So we, Mark said the way to symbolize this is, thank you, uh, X. <laughs> Anyways, so Mark says we symbolize it this way. We put the sufficient condition in the antecedent. If, so how, what does this read? If you jump in the lake, you're going to get wet. Yeah. Okay. And that just says jumping in the lake is sufficient Pushing, for right. getting wet. Now let's see, suppose someone symbolizes it this way. If you jump in Green Lake, then you're going to, or jumping in Green Lake is sufficient for getting wet, and they symbolize it that way. What's wrong with doing it that way? Well, this, this would be saying that uh, getting wet is a sufficient condition for being in Green Lake. Yeah, and, but is, how would you read that? If, if you're literally. wet, then you jump in Green Lake, yeah. which is not necessarily the case. I can get wet in any number of other ways. So if you saw someone and they're soaking wet, you wouldn't necessarily suppose they must have jumped in Green Lake. Right. Like you could get wet standing in the rain. Yeah, which is about to happen. This is happening. Yeah. And so, so Mark's reminding us that we have the sun memory device. The sufficient condition goes to the left when we symbolize it. When we symbolize a necessary condition, we put it to the right of a horseshoe. And so that's symbolizing necessary and sufficient conditions. Is that mm -hmm. sufficient? I think it's sufficient. Indeed. Necessary, perhaps not, but sufficient. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's it.